Hello. Today is um, August 25th, 2016. A year ago, on this date, I got the CART T trial in Seattle. Um, just a little summary of my particular mantle cell lymphoma. It's the, the B cell lymphoma that I had. Um, I was diagnosed in 2010. From 2010 to 2004, I had seven tumors throughout my body. The last one was on one of my eyes, I believe it was this one. Um, so in those four years, I learned um, that I could beat cancer because I beat it seven times. It was one tumor and then treatment, another tumor. I did not go three months. Um, without another tumor popping up somewhere. Um, they were internal, they were external. <clears throat> so in uh, 2015, or basically the, the following year, August 2014 to August 2015, I went from having seven tumors in four years to having 14 in that year. So the tumors got more aggressive and they started spreading. I started getting them instead of one at a time. I started getting them two to three and finally in August of 2015 I rolled up into Seattle with five tumors. One in my shoulder, one on my neck, um, one inside my left lung, my ascending colon, and also on my spine um, close to the nerve that was causing temporary um, paralysis on my left leg. Pretty much could not walk very much and enjoy the lovely hills in Seattle. Um, so I walked into the doctor's office. The doctor looked at me and said um, that first of all that I had the largest medical file that he's seen. Um, in his years of practice, I don't know how long he's been practicing, but um, more likely more than 35 years. So um, I have a record of having a gigantic medical file. So um, the good news he told me is that I still have plenty of T cells left, left to harvest. Um, that was more likely the fact that I got um, transplanted with my sister cells, um, stem cell transplant prior to that so they were probably her T cells even though the transplant did not work to get my cancer it it worked enough to get me to the, the state-of-the-art clinical um, T cell infusion autoimmune therapy um, I was um, the 63rd person on the trial they told me that four people had died before me so they were gonna adjust their their protocol um, the first time they did it um, it didn't work um, so I got very depressed for a little bit and um, it was actually a, a, a year ago so five months after I was diagnosed with um, cancer I was and supposedly a, a uncurable cancer that um, typically people go anywhere from four to seven years after diagnosis so I was just thinking wow the it didn't work and here I am back at square one um, basically I kind of snapped out of it you know listening to a lot of music that, that, that emphasized smiling and and emphasizing that the choice was yours um, and and how the cancer diagnosis was was kind of like a roller coaster journey um, and and I was just sitting there in my room listening to my music before my next biopsy and the morning blood draw had gone horrible. It was just not a good experience. Uh, I was kind of cranky. It was just just in a bad mood because I just got news that you know didn't work, and they wanted to try it again. And I was like, why try it again? It's not going to work. Let's just send me home and call it a day and go from there. Whatever happens, happens. But I just decided to, you know figure out why I'm still here after five years with no cure and other people have gone and um, and I was just basically saying that as soon as I found out I had cancer I 
I started living life as every day was a bonus because I should have died five years ago, so I better not waste it. Um, so in a way, it was a blessing because I, I was now living in the now and absorbing it, and and I didn't know when I was gonna, how long I was gonna last or what have you. So I went through my bucket list, um, but I smartly um, added things to the bucket list was as many as possible, so those bucket lists never end. Um, I decided to to smile, you know, it's life too short not to smile. So I went to my biopsy and uh, I smiled and I asked everybody how their day was and it was just a totally different environment and a feel that, you know, they smiled back, they asked me how I was, they they seemed to be very caring because, you know, I, I you know, they, they like my story and so have, so have you and they like my positive attitude and the fact that I was still able to smile and not be a grump. Um, so the biopsy went well, the CAR T got it, and obviously it worked because I just kept on smiling, you know, just, you know, I figured that the reason I was still here is to, to, to you know, spread smiles and spread love and, and spread joy. And then um, that, that November, um, uh, the band Stick Figure came out with, with an album called Set in Stone, they kind of you know, emphasize what I was now living, and it was just such a relief to to hear it in in musical tense as um as as a uh, you know as just just the fact that it you know smiled on faces you know is spreading the good vibe and and being happy to be alive um it, it's it's um. And that's my mission, you know, I, I started working with a coach to help people transition back into the workforce, which um, I never really stopped working um, throughout my six years of cancer treatments, um, which was a blessing because it, it um, helped me keep, keep me sharp and majority of the drugs they give you is keeps you awake anyhow, so I might as well put my awakeness to use. and. Um, I was fortunate that I could work from Wi-Fi from home and stuff like that. Um, but from the get-go, I had a lot of people supporting me. Um, I was sent a book right off the bat called 50 Essential Things to Do When You Get Cancer. I don't know if you can see this, but there's one of the books that they gave me. Um, and basically, you're the boss of your body. you got to manage these doctors. And I poor doctors <laughs> I would get them in trouble for not having plan B authorized by the insurance when um, plan A didn't work so I was like always two steps ahead and saying hey let's get the pre-approval done just in case this doesn't get done it's not a two-week process where my tumors are growing at a rapid rate and so on and so forth um, once you see the doctors and you see the different hospitals and you you deal with the thing is you you get better at it but you can't expect the doctors to do everything and the doctors to communicate with each other. So you got to be the facilitator. You got to be the one that's looking out for you. Um, they do look out for you, but they're not feeling what you're feeling. It, it's it's your body. It tells you, if you listen, what's going on. I was calling <coughs> and finding tumors before any scans. And the scans were just confirming the tumors that I was talking about. Plus, I was able to touch them and feel them. Um, ending up in the hospital because of infections was a common thing. You don't have any immune system for a while. Um, so I got this book because I am fortunate to be a massage therapist. I was a massage therapist seven years before I got cancer. And um, I practiced a lot on myself. These books, acupuncture books. Uh, this one is a good one where it explains in general if you're you're feeling pain here and you're feeling pain there you can do stuff for yourself like here's a thuracane you get it and you work the the bicep in the back you see that so what else um doing what you enjoy um this past year i've been fortunate enough to go to 25 concerts 
Um, it's something I enjoy. I like the vibe at concerts. And um, it makes me forget about my treatment or my worries or what's happening. Um, so doing, doing what you enjoy is very important. And the support, the support of my work. I never stopped working. Uh, my work, uh, Taylor Farms, thank you very much. They also um, helped me out financially to pay for some all the housing in the 10 weeks I was at Seattle. So buy Taylor Farms food. If Taylor Farms fresh vegetables, if you are able to. Um, another thing is important, water. Water is very important. I learned from this book, Hidden Messages in Water. We're pretty much made up of water and positive and negative thoughts affect water crystals and they show it that if you talk bad to a bottle of water and then take a picture, the water crystal that forms are not good. If you talk positive to it, it's bad. We're mostly made up of water, so positive thoughts hurt us. Um, I mean, <laughs> you want that? Negative thoughts hurt us, positive thoughts help us. So, um, before cancer, I was kind of not uh, a very um, guy that was happy with my situation in life. But that all changed after cancer because it was kind of like a, a yellow light saying, hey, you're not going to live forever. Life is too short. Be grateful. So I have a book called, you know, I like this one because this is Gratitude. Gratitude is very important. Um, gratitude, attitude, the band Thrive. Thrive, the band. Look them up, they're from Santa Cruz. Um, all these bands and all these concerts I go to have been very supportive. They expanders, they put me in a video. Fortunate Youth reminds you that we are fortunate and if you look at yourself as fortunate, anything is possible. Again, Set in Stone by Stick Figure. Um, emphasize, you, you know, how we got to keep on going and, and you know get through and and hold on and so on and so forth so what else do i want to say uh any more shout outs i don't think i have any more shout outs uh holy grail the, their metal so i listen to a lot of reggae and a lot of metal the yin yang water is important um and doctors sometimes look at you and say, well, I can't, they don't really say anything, but they're kind of like staring at you as if you're a ghost and can't believe that you're still here and still alive because, <coughs> oh, too much dabbing there, but I'm <laughs> just kidding. Um, so what else is going on? This past year, 10 good months um, out of the 12 months, the last two months have been bad, so I went 10 months thinking that cancer a battle was in the rearview mirror and I was getting stronger and then I got an infection that put me in the hospital for 10 days. Um, that infection prompted a PET scan thinking that the lymphoma was coming back. They also prompted the fact that I might have had GVHD, so they were trying to rule that out and um, basically since I had a tumor in my ascending colon, I was having a lot of... Um, Stomach issues, um, needed fluids. I was in the hospital last week for three days getting fluids. And I told them that I didn't start feeling that way until I started taking the antibiotics for my um, infection. And as soon as I started taking antibiotics for the infection, I felt a little sick. But they were saying that could have been the lymphoma, it could be the graft versus host, same symptoms. And I believe there was a side effect of the medicine. So they did test yesterday, they rolled that out, but they did the scan, the scan came back, no tumors, so I'm celebrating 12 months tumor free, thanks to the CAR-T, yeah, it kind of rhymes. What else? Um, because I've gotten a little better, Graf vs. Host doesn't act like that, so she's not thinking it's Graf vs. Host, and um, my BMT doctor, so she ordered a, a sample to test to see if I have a allergic reaction to antibiotics because I've been taking antibiotics for so long um, to prevent infections. Um, that's it for now. Stay positive. Um, I was talking fast. I was trying to make this quick and short. Um, it's been almost 15 minutes so I'm going to cut it off at 15 minutes but life is too short not to smile people. Enjoy it.